Hey guys, today we've got an amazing lesson from Racket Flex. They're part of Tennis Con 6. I love these guys. Dede and Daytree are amazing players and coaches. Make sure to enjoy this video, but also make sure to get your free ticket to Tennis Con number 6, because when you do, you enter to get a free slinger bag. You get into a raffle to win a free slinger bag, plus a total tennis makeover from Tennis Express. So make sure to do that right now up here in the card section, down in the description box. That's how you get your free tickets to Tennis Con number six. Enjoy this awesome lesson from Racket Flex, and I'll be back at the end of the video to say goodbye. In this video, you're gonna learn how to get the best slicers of your life. I mean the kind of slicer with the sick side spin that carves off the court, stretching your opponent out wide, and giving you that easy one-two combo that allows you to fly through your service games. And we'll do it all in three simple steps. Well, maybe not so simple. <laughs> Step number one on understanding the slice serve is gonna be the contact point. Now, to do this, we're gonna break things down on the first principles level using physics. Now, fundamentally, power, or the ball's forward velocity, is going to be driven through by the linear force of the racket driving forward through a motion called internal shoulder rotation. That's this motion right here. Now, spin is actually going to be created from the frictional force that you create when you brush up the back of the ball on a forehand or when you brush to the side of the ball to get the ball to carve off the court on your slice serve. So to visualize how this is done, I want you to picture your serve from above. And now imagine there's a clock right around you as you're beginning your service motion. Generally speaking, for your slice serve, you want your swing path to be going from about eight o'clock to two o'clock in your swing. This, of course, will happen naturally if you close off your racket angle as you make contact, and this should actually feel pretty comfortable. Now, this should happen naturally if you're actually leading with the edge and actually closing off your racket head at contact a little bit more instead of rotating it all the way in as you would a flat serve. Now, you might notice upon trying this that your slice serve is a little bit slower than your flat serve. Now, don't worry. This doesn't mean that we're lazy or that we're <laughs> putting less energy into the slice serve. It just means that we're distributing force in a different way. So let's take a look at the typical spin levels that a pro will generate. Top servers are swinging just as hard on their slice serve, but because the racket face is contacting the ball while closed off to the side, this same racketed speed gets transferred into spin. So while you should accelerate just as hard on your slice serve, the overall swing should feel and sound more like a cut rather than a hit right into the net. <laughs> now, in order to develop the proper contact positioning, we're gonna have to master the toss. Right off the bat, if you're tossing too far to your left, you're gonna notice that the slice serve is a lot harder to execute because your natural swing path will be oriented upward. So while tossing to your left is actually ideal for developing a kick serve, tossing to your left for a slice serve will actually hurt it. Now, we'll have a video coming up on the kick serve, so be tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe so you're the first to know when it comes out. Back to the slice serve, you should be making contact roughly over your hitting shoulder or your head. And this position here should feel relatively comfortable. You shouldn't be too high where you feel impinged or too low where you're starting to swing forward. Now this position here is also gonna give you the added benefit of disguise, which we'll get into. Now, a common teaching instruction on the slice serve is to toss to your right. Now, you might actually see this at your club because it's plagued at the rec level where they toss over to the right side of their body and then carve the serve. And it actually does work until it doesn't. While tossing to your right is a great tool to teach the initial feeling of creating side spin on the ball, the problem with this technique is that it signals to your opponent exactly what kind of serve you're gonna hit. So instead, players like Federer will make contact right over their hitting shoulder and hit the slice serve and flat serve on the same exact toss. Now, of course, there is an exception to this if you have difficulty with getting a full range of motion with your shoulder, or let's say you're just recovering from a shoulder injury. In this case, tossing a little bit more to your right and then making contact is gonna take a lot of load off your shoulder, so that might be what you wanna go with. But ideally, as I covered in this video, 
you want to start tossing with that leftward arc and then intersect the ball's flight right when it's above your hitting shoulder. And now onto the final question. How should we switch up the flat bomb down the tee with a slice serve that carves off the court at will? Well, my friend, that is all about the swing path. Now to understand the ideal slice serve swing, let's take a look at the maestro himself. Let's see a clip of Federer's flat versus slice serve. Now pause right before contact. Now right here, can you tell the difference which one is flat and which one is slice? Well, that was a trick question because <laughs> they're both flat serves. But for real though, even in slow motion, there's almost no difference between Federer's slice serve and his flat serve. His stance, his toss load, his racket drop and leg drive are all the same. So this means that the opponent can only rely on the last few milliseconds after contact to actually react to the ball. Now, we'll be releasing a video very soon dissecting all about Federer's serve. So be sure to leave a like for that and that'll let us know to release it sooner. Now, as Federer enters the upward swing, his elbow extends and he gets into this on edge position that looks like he's about to chop the ball. And this keeps his shoulder in external rotation. And from this point, he'll make one small but critical difference to get him from going flat down the tee to carving out wide. On the flat serve, the hand and arm is gonna rotate in earlier so that the racket strings are directly behind the ball at contact. And this gives you more of a plow through feeling. On the slice serve, you'll be rotating the arm in later leading to the strings still facing sideways by the time you make contact. Now, in order to achieve this motion, try not to swing slower to get this effect, but instead focus on the timing of this internal shoulder rotation. And specifically for the slice serve, you should focus on throwing the edge of the racket up to the ball even harder. So like a forehand volley or slice, you're gonna lead with the pinky side of your hand toward the ball. Now, this motion is very similar to the forehand volley or the forehand slice. The pinky side is gonna to lead to the ball. You're gonna lead with the edge of the racket going down the back of the ball. But take a look at this when I start making contact with the slice and as I incrementally increase the contact height with my shoulder, you'll start to notice that it starts to resemble the slice serve. But now instead of increasing underspin with the slice, we're using the same motion to create side spin on the ball. Now, you may start noticing that even on the slice serve, you're getting a sort of natural forearm pronation through contact when you swing hard enough, as does Federer's serve. But this motion should actually naturally happen as a result of the force of your shoulder internally rotating. The forearm pronation itself should actually be more of a byproduct, not the creation of side spin itself. Now, in order to get all of these pieces together, I wanna to show you my top favorite drills to get used to the slice serve. So here we go. So like we mentioned, hitting a slice serve is a lot like hitting an underspin slice. So the way we're going to learn this motion, especially for those of you who are slicers and dicers out there and are already familiar with creating backspin on the ball, we're gonna use that as a progression tool to get used to the slice serve. So we're gonna start off by slicing a few serves and really here, the cutting motion this brushing effect when you're going down the back of the ball. What you should be looking for here is this frictional force that we talked about being created on the ball and therefore creating backspin. Now, as we start to adjust the toss height, you'll start to notice that the axis of rotation is going to naturally change. So this time we're gonna do the same slicing motion, but toss at our head, then a little bit above our head, and then finally, all the way up where we would serve. And start to notice that that same underspin is now transferred into side spin on the ball. From here, once you're comfortable with getting enough side spin on the ball to get it to curve, you're gonna start in your pre-throw position and focus on chopping the side. From there, I want you to start alternating between the internal rotation motion that you would do on your flat serve with the slice serve. The tweaks are not gonna be in the toss or the windup, but instead, in the few moments before contact, what swing path you're gonna have and what your contact angle is going to be. So I'm going to alternate between a flat down the tee with a slice out wide based off the same toss. So remember, for a flat down the tee, we're gonna add in internal rotation 
a little bit earlier. And for a slice serve out wide, we're gonna add in that slight delay on the ball. All right, athletes, and with those drills, I hope you start getting the cut effect on the ball and start seeing the best slice serves of your life. Now, we actually have a full-fledged bonus course inside of our Racket Flex serve system, specifically on adding the variation of the slice serve. We call it the slice serve revolution. And you can actually get access to this as part of our very limited time Black Friday and Cyber Monday legacy bundle. This is going to include all of our courses, including week to winning forehands, home court advantage, and the racket flex serve system, which actually includes the slice serve revolution bonus, as well as a kick serve Kickstarter bonus. So if you're interested in that, be sure to click the first link in the description below before the deal ends on Monday, the 29th at 11.59 p.m. As always, athletes, I hope you go out and train hard. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, go subscribe to their channel. Remember to like this video. When you like this video, my buddy B2, he's going to give you a free 100 B2 puppy kisses. Also, don't forget, go get it B2. Don't forget to get your free ticket to Tennis Con number six because when you do, you're entered into a raffle to win a free slinger bag as well as a total tennis makeover from Tennis Express. So you don't want to miss out on that awesome opportunity. Go up in your card section right now, that little I card circle in the corner of the video or in the description box to click on the link, get your free ticket. That will allow you to see all the amazing instructors, free 48 hour access to each and every day. And it's an incredible event coming up here in October. You're gonna love it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss our next video and like it up. Remember when you like this video, B2 is gonna give you a free 100 B2 puppy kisses when you like the video. When you subscribe, it's unlimited. So you might as well subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next video.